Welcome in to another edition of the In the Money podcast for KeenelandSelect.com. Tom Leach along with Jonathan Fowler from Keeneland Select to talk about four stakes races headlined by the grade one starlet for two-year-old fillies at Los Alamitos. And Take Charge Brandy's making one last run at the Eclipse Award uh, coming off back-to-back wins at Delta Downs and then previously in the Breeders' Cup. So can you beat her, Jonathan, in the starlet? I think it's going to be pretty tough, uh, to be honest, and I, and I really don't like this move um, coming back, you know, such a hard campaign in the fall. But, you know, she's doing everything right right now, and I really liked how she was able to sit off the pace uh, last time in the Delta Down Princess and when going away. So in the chance that, you know, she may have uh, ran her two best races and she may be a touch uh, off, uh, feathered coming in from Todd Pletcher, sending her back out west. I really like that angle, getting Mike Smith aboard for the first time on this horse. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of money with feathered over Take Charge Brandy in the instance that uh, Take Charge Brandy may be off her game just a little bit. But um, And the one horse that I, that I do think may have a little bit of chance in, in to improve is also Danette. Uh, first time racing since the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies as well. Didn't uh, uh, she didn't do too awfully bad in finishing fifth that day, so she can make an improvement off that, off a little bit of rest. Um, I like definitely like those top three. So uh, me with, you know, kind of fluttering back and forth between Take Charge Brandy and Feathered and then Danette coming in for third. I'm going to try to upset him with Majestic Presence. I like this horse a little bit in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies race, and she didn't really run much at all. But she's had three wide trips in a row, and last time I thought she ran much better didn't get beat far by Take Charge Brandy, and she was wide on that tight turn track. And I like the change to Gary Stevens to try to work out a little better trip. And I just thought the, the race prior to the, the Breeders' Cup that uh, she showed a little promise. And uh, by a mile and an eighth, I think I'd like her even more. But I'm going to try just because I think that I'm intrigued by the price. I'm going to try Majestic's presence and just box her with Take Charge Brandy and with Feathered. I uh, almost went to Feathered to begin with, and then I talked myself into the bigger price I think I'll get on, t- on Majestic Presence. So that's going to be the one I'm going to take a shot with in the Starlet. Aqueduct, it's uh, their eighth race, as it is at Los Al, that is the feature, and it's the Queens County. And this one is a mile and an eighth for three-year-olds and up, the boys. I ended up going to micromanage the 1A. Didn't have a strong opinion here. If the entry would get really pounded, I'd, I'd probably look elsewhere. But I'm going to take micromanage consistent and does show a good race on the inner course, which is different than the regular outside dirt course there at Aqueduct. Uh, El Nawi, who won here at Keeneland last time. Storm and Monarco uh, intrigues me a little bit. Don Dulce, Dulce for uh, a bit of a price. Doesn't like to win, but uh, I can certainly see hitting the board. So I'm going to try the uh, the 1A and then use them in exactas with 2, 6, and 4. How about you? Uh, Micromanage is one of those horses when he flashes his brilliance, he's he, he just looks so great and when he wins, and then he just runs a clunker. And it's so hard to get behind a horse like that, but it's hard not to throw him out at the same time. Um, so I'll definitely use him in my picks. And you also have Vijek that kind of does the same thing, uh, runs a great race, runs a clunker. Um, he's surprisingly to me the 5-2 to two favorite. I would have probably picked Micromanage to be the, the, the top horse in here. I actually settled on my top horse to be Storm and Monarco after watching some, some of his races and how he's running on. He, he definitely faces a tougher bunch today, uh, but just the way he's been running and, and getting those good speed figures, um, I'm going to say he's being consistent, and I love a consistent horse. Um, so I'm putting Stormy, Monar- Stormy Monarco on top um, with Micromanage underneath, um, uh, and then Vijak as well. Misconnect is an interesting horse as well that's, you know, a, a, an improving three-year-old, won his last race, taking a, a step back up. Um, into the stakes race, so we'll see how he improves off that. But Storm and Monarco is my top choice here. Gulfstream Park has a graded stake. It's the grade three sugar swirl for Phillies and Mayors three and up, six furlongs. Comes early on the card, race three. And uh, where did you land here at the sugar swirl? I, I finally settled on R free roll, the number four. Uh, I think this horse is going to be the speed horse. Uh, ran in the Thoroughbred Club of America last time out, was setting a hot, hot pace that day. Um, didn't fare that well, finished fifth, um, not too awfully bad, didn't too, finish too far back. Um, I don't think there's going to be nearly as much speed in this race today. I think she's going to be the speed of the race, and I, I think she can just gun them down. She's won five of ten at this distance, really likes the sprinting. 
Um, and I, I think the, the little bit of a break will help her a little bit. Um, okay. Top choice, Mary, or second choice, Mary Meadow, uh, won the Sky Beauty last time at Gulfstream Park West. Um, and also likes this distance as well, fairly fairly good as well. So those are my top two choices. I ended up taking a shot with Wildcat Lily. Uh, I think if she gets back to her best, she might have a little bit of a class edge on these. She's been um, it, it was back last year when we saw her best, but she is going to a new barn and she gets a speed rider in Lopez, and all of those are, are good fits I think for her to maybe bounce back off a, a couple of subpar efforts before this recent short layoff. So. I'm going to try Wildcat Lily and think I get a little bit of a, you know, if, if, I think the price will be uh, an overlay if she is anywhere back close to where she was last year. And Mary Meadow I would use with her. Centrique and uh, Old Danio, the two for Wolfs and five and six, would use with her. So three with two, five, six, and then flip them the other way. So keen in on the three Wildcat Lily for me. Fairgrounds, it's their Louisiana Day of Champions card, and uh, we decided to focus in on the tenth race, which is the ladies. Phillies and Mayors three and up at a mile and a sixteenth because it's got a big field, more of an intriguing betting race. And I ended up coming to I Dazzle. Uh, four wins this year. Uh, was wide last time at uh, Delta Downs. Like broke from the eight hole, and that's a track with tight turns. And uh, Jimmy Graham's been red hot in the saddle down at uh, Fairgrounds, and he picks up the ride here. Uh, Rosie Naprovnik not riding, and she's been the leading rider at Fairgrounds the last few winters. So um, maybe Jimmy Graham's picking up some of that business. And uh, I Dazzle is my pick here. Going to use her with the five Tensus Harbor, the six O oh Baby O oh Baby, and the ten Blading Wildcat. But uh, I, I think this is a, a fairly wide open affair. How about you? I agree totally with you. Uh, this is a. a I went back and forth between about four horses. Finally settled on the five, Tensas Harbor, which you mentioned. Um, I think she gets back to a distance that she likes a little bit better. She actually finished second in this race by neck last year. She was very determined in that race. She's one of those that likes to close late, so she'll need a good, clean trip. But I think breaking from that five hole will allow her to save some ground on on those turns. So hopefully she's going to finish pretty well in the end. The four is pretty intriguing, Arwista. She's coming off a four-month layoff, but if she gets to the lead, she's pretty dangerous right there. So if she, And it doesn't look like a ton of speed here, so if she's not challenged, she could be um, quite tricky to, to get down. Little Miss Protocol, um, I Dazzle, Tensus Harbor, they've all kind of run at each, run at each other, beat each other up a couple times. So it's uh, those three right there, Little Miss Protocol, Tensus Harbor, and I Dazzle, I think they're, they're, very, they're three that are you know, kind of measure up very similarly. So I would use those three along with our Wista um, and maybe Trifecta plays as well. Make sure you're following Keeneland Select on Twitter because you'll get updates on this podcast and also the, the weekly Race of the Week video pick that Katie Gensler and I do. It is at Keeneland Select, right, Jonathan? Definitely. And then we, we kind of post how you guys do throughout the week and or out throughout the weekend and, and tell you how much you're getting back on your picks. Well, hopefully we'll have some uh, – triumphs to to tout this week after the four stakes races that we've talked about uh best of luck to everybody keep your keeneland select account fully funded so you can play and uh, always have a shot to to get down if you you find a good thing when you're uh, handicapping best of luck this weekend we'll be back with another edition at the end of the money podcast